Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm very excited because my lovely friend Zena Kamgang is here. Hello. Thank you so much. But I'm more excited because of what she's going to cook for us, which is... Which is basically a Nigerian chicken stew. So it's chicken in a really spicy, flavorful tomato sauce. You don't like spice, don't worry. We'll show you how to tame it down. But okay. it is delicious. And that is something I've never tried on the channel before. I've never actually eaten as well. So yeah, I've never excited. eaten. So very, very excited. So we are going to get started. But before that, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button, guys. Very important. So the first thing we're going to do, I should have said, this is a very non-traditional way of oh. making it. So the flavors are going to taste very traditional, but this is the way that I found that makes, first of all, the least amount of mess. Okay. And is also the most foolproof because the normal way you would sort of get your vegetables, which we're cutting up now, which are bell peppers, onions, tomatoes, and some chili. And then you would blend it until it was a puree. And then you would cook that down, you boil it down. Ah. But that makes so much mess because everything okay. splatters all over the place. So instead, we are going to roast them. Then we've got four, what I would say, medium vine tomatoes. Okay. And again, because we're tr trying to concentrate the flavor, we're gonna de-seed them. Because oh. all of that is what you'd be cooking off. It's all the water, all yeah. the moisture. So I find that this is just an easier way to get to the end result. Chili. Um, this is where you can customize. This is a Scotch yeah. bonnet. It's hot. I'm half Nigerian, half Cameroonian. This is, this runs through my veins. So I would use two or three, but we're gonna stick. No, no, let's <laughs> do one. Yeah, yeah. We're Thank gonna do you. one. If even that is quite daunting for you, use half, yeah. use a quarter, or you could even just put it in a hole at the end and just sort of like poke holes in it. Customize it. And then ginger is the last one. Okay. So let me DC the tomatoes. Do they look like that? So this I'm just gonna leave whole. I'm just gonna take off the stem. Actually, I might go in half. Okay. There's the insides. You can take out the sort of white pith there no, or no. the seeds, but we're just gonna leave it in. And then we have ginger, which most people peel. I don't find that you really need to peel it. So I'm just gonna sort of leave it okay. as is. There we go. The ginger will come when we blend, but for now we're just gonna roast the peppers, tomatoes and onions. So I'm gonna transfer them to a tray. You want to drizzle it very lightly with oil. And I say this because we're going to use quite a bit of oil later. But this is just to give it like a little bit of a sheen. Just a little bit. Give it a bit of a toss. So what's the temperature of the oven? So we're going to go 220 Celsius. Ah. So you're going quite high. The 200 fan. 200 fan or even like 210 fan, 230. Okay. Because what you're trying to do here is, first of all, roasting is going to remove the moisture and make the flavors more sort of concentrated. Yeah. But you're also wanting to develop slightly charred edges because that's uh, going to add a little bit of smokiness to the okay. stew. Because if you think like back in the day, like my grandma, my great grandma, they cooked this over the fire. So we're trying to mimic that smoky taste. So we're going to roast this for about 25 minutes or 30, basically until you start to see some sort of charred edges around the side. So what next? So the next thing, while the veg is in the oven, we're going to get our chicken. Mm. So you can do multiple things here. I've gone with thigh because that's my favorite cut. Uh, and I also want chicken on the bone, but you could do drumsticks. <laughs> Yeah. There's so much flavor. But then you could also do a whole chicken and just break it up into pieces. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. The only reason I don't is because I don't like breast meat and no one in my family likes breast meat. So, oh, okay. but if you had that, you can do that. So okay. all we're going to do now is take the skins off. So I got eight chicken thighs, which okay. was one kilo. Perfect. 100 grams over. So one kilo of meat. Whether one we kilo. Take legs, whether we take thighs or whole chicken. Exactly. Just okay. a kilo. So and on so the bone and no skin. On the, well, so the skin, that's a personal preference thing. I love chicken skin, but only when it's crispy. Yeah, this is going to be a stew, right? This is going to be wet. And for me, the only thing, like crispy chicken skin is great, but soggy, limp oh. chicken skin is not nice. So if you want to keep it, keep it. But for yeah, me... If, if that's your preference, absolutely do it. nothing wrong with that. But for me, no saggy skin, please. So this is quite rogue, I think, to a lot of people, because we're going to cook this chicken in a way that just sort of is not very Western. We're going to boil it first in a bunch of seasoning, and then we're going to drain that, use the stock for the stew, and then we're going to put it back in the oven. So wow. it's a process. This is definitely one of those dishes. It looks really rogue, but it's one of those just trust the process. We're going to go everything into the pan and it's a cold pan. And the first thing we're going to add is a tablespoon of dried thyme. Then we're going to add a tablespoon of curry powder. So mine is a mild one. Okay, fine. Yeah. You can use mild, you can use hot, you can use whatever. Then we're gonna do two bay leaves. If yours is small, just use four. And then we're gonna do two chicken stock cubes. So one and then two. Now the pan can come on. 
I've got a pre-measured amount of about 300 mils. I might not use the whole thing because the, the idea here is you're trying to create a really, really, really flavorful stock. Yeah. And that's what's really going to season the stew. So you want as much of the liquid to be like the chicken juices. You don't want to dilute it too much. So I might start with, might start with 150 mils, 200 mils, and I'll see sort of as it begins to cook where the liquid's at and I can always top it off. So I'm just gonna do that, give it a mix, and then we'll leave that. So oh. there's no salt in this because we've got, we've got two chicken stock cubes. There's salt in that. And we're also gonna be adding stock, uh, salt to the vegetables. So once you wanna bring it up to a boil first, and then once it comes up to a boil, then we'll go back down to sort of medium, medium low. Uh, this is gonna cook for about half an hour. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna use the full 300. Okay. Okay, we'll come back to it when it's sort of bubbling. Okay. And then we'll see whether it needs more water. It's one of those sort of, use your eyes. Your eyes yeah. will guide you, they'll help you. So okay. this is coming to a boil now. It smells really good. It smells really good. Yeah. The chicken is starting to release some of its juices. I'm just gonna add a little bit more water. Okay. So I'm guessing what you're trying to do is basically make sure that the chicken is covered. So that's the thing, it doesn't even need to be covered necessarily because okay. we're still putting a lid on and so it will steam. It's more that I'm looking at the texture here. If you can see, because you've got quite a lot of powder, this is already quite thick. thick. Oh, yeah. And so I just want to loosen the texture. Uh, okay. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. So I'm just going to put a little bit more. Also because there's a stock cube in there too, you want enough to sort of, for things to dissolve and get happy. Um, you know what, I'm going to add a bit more. I think this is probably going to end up being yeah. four to five hundred. Yeah. That's enough. And then I'm gonna put a lid on it and then sort of half an hour. And what's so interesting is, again, this is so non-Western. To a Western palate, we are gonna overcook the nonsense out of the chicken. Because after we boil it for 30 minutes, yeah. we're gonna drain it and then we're going back in the oven to crisp it up. But <laughs> famously, like some of my family, they think that like, because they're so used to chicken that's been cooked for a long time, and a lot of the time it's fried so it gets like tough again. Yeah. They think that the chicken that people have in the West is so soft, like it's just too oh, mushy. It's too but it's when you're used to sort of a, it's also different types of chicken, like a hard body chicken. But anyway, this is gonna bubble away for 30 minutes, which means that we can start the rest of the prep. So I actually forgot this. <laughs> in our veg mix that goes in the oven, yes. you also need onion. So I'm doing that now. I'm just gonna add them and it's gonna be fine. Yeah, it's, it's whatever. Fine. So one onion goes with one. One pepper. onion. So it ends up being one onion, one bell pepper, one scotch bonnet, or more or yeah. less and four tomatoes i'm gonna put these on and then we're just gonna take the rest of the veg out when it's ready okay so don't do this at home but don't touch it oh no don't i lost one of it. <laughs> yeah, here you go Let's i'm gonna go there we go in the yeah. corner there we go yeah we are very professional <laughs> in this <laughs> there yeah. we go yeah there we go we got it okay. it's fine the first onion Please don't look at my chopping skills. They know my chopping, chopping skills. Anything's going to be better than my chopping skills. I feel like, so I feel like I have decent chopping skills, but no, sometimes you just need like a sharper knife. Anyway, what was I saying? Onions so, feature yeah. twice yes. in the recipe. Yeah. So we're going to, we've got the onions in the base of the stew, yeah. which are now finally yeah, in the oven. Yeah. And then the other uh, onion is going to be used to fry the stew. Oh. And by that, you'll see what I mean. But basically we're going to get some oil. We're going to fry some onions. We're going to add tomato puree and okay. you'll see. So you're just going to two small onions or one large onion and thinly slice it. Finely chop it. Finely. You want it little, little, little chunks. You could thinly slice it to be fair. Okay. So that is how it's looking guys. Like. Just pretend that the onions are a little bit more cooked. Just, yeah. just pretend. Yeah. Right, so you want to blend it. This is all going in a blender now. So we're going to get all of this into the blender. In fact, let me just do one of these and hopefully not get So will you spilled. add any water to this or just... Just as is. Because remember, the whole point of this is you're trying to get rid of the water. So it would defeat the point of us cooking this out to then have to then cook it out again. So there's enough natural moisture in all of this that it will blend well. The ginger we had earlier, don't have to peel it. If there's any sort of like knobby bits, you can just sort of trim those off. That goes straight in. Okay. As well as a teaspoon of salt. And then we blend. So now we're actually gonna cook the stew. And the first step is what we, we're gonna fry the stew essentially. Okay. And correct me if I'm wrong, kind of like how sometimes when you make a curry, you wanna fry the base yes. until the oil separates. Yes. It's kind of the same okay. principle here. So we're gonna go pretty heavy with the oil. Don't worry, this makes a lot of stew, but basically you want, it's gonna be about 100 to 100 milliliters of oil. This isn't necessarily so the- So and you want to use sunflower, rapeseed, that yeah. kind of oil? Anything that's kind of neutral because okay. you don't want to sort of anything that's gonna wow. change the taste. Oh. 
I should have waited for that to get hotter, but it's fine. <laughs> and so we're gonna fry this for about sort of eight to 10 minutes. You're looking for it to soften and then just at the point where it's starting to brown. So we have eight to 10 minutes and that is gonna give you enough time to sort the chicken out. Exactly. Perfect. So at this point, our chicken is done. So it's been 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes. Uh, and at this point, in theory, not in theory, in actuality, it's cooked through. Basically, what we're gonna make, the stew's gonna be a really thick base and this is gonna loosen it and add lots of flavor. So we wanna get our chicken out first because we are gonna get that into the oven now. And so it's gonna sort of start to get some color, get a little caramelized. Lovely. So oven is still on at 210. Still at 210. And that's probably going to go for about 20 to 25 minutes, basically once you start seeing some color. Now this is where people who do keep the skin in, they try and then sort of rescue it by getting it crispy, but then it goes back into the sauce and it gets soggy again. Yeah. So I think just, just don't bother with it. But it, personal preference. Yeah. Do whatever you want. So now that's going to go into the oven for about 20 to 30 minutes or until you start to get a little bit of color. Now what you're left with is this very delicious broth, which is what's going to season your... I could drink it like mid. this, yeah. Really good. Yeah. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of salt and then we're good to come back to the onions. So let me season this with a bit of salt. Bit of salt. There we go. And then now we can come back to our onions because they are basically, they've softened and yeah. they're starting to get brown, which right. is exactly where we want to be. We're going to add our double concentrated tomato puree. And the goal here is you want to sort of cook it out. Before I get to that, let me tell you how much. We're using 60 grams, which I kind of know what that looks like now, but if you don't measure it out, about that much, maybe about that much. Uh, we're going to add that and then you want to cook it out. And by cook it out, I mean, it's got kind of like a, it's super intense in flavor, which we like, but there's also a little bit of an artificial, like strong tomato note and you want to temper that. And you'll know that you get that. It takes about three to four minutes. It'll go from being sort of this very bright red to slightly darker. So we're gonna cook that for about three minutes. While that sort of cooks down, I'm quickly gonna drain the stock. You don't have to. I like to do it only because I want to take out some of those time pieces. So like all of this stuff. Yeah, it's sort much of imp easier to do it. It's imparted the all the flavor, yeah. but you don't actually need it in your no, mouth. No. So that's why I that's do it. That's a lot of dry time. It's a lot of dry time. Don't know if you can compare, but this is like a more bright red and this is becoming more of a burgundy yeah, color. Yeah. And you can smell it too. It smells like almost caramelized tomatoes. At this point, the tomato paste is cooked out so we can bring our oh, blended mix. I see. So we're gonna add the blended mix, which yeah. is a bit thick, but we go. Get as much of it out as possible. because It's super flavorful and whatever's remaining, don't worry. We're gonna get it out later with the stock. And this goes back to what I was saying earlier, where kind of like how you have with curry base bases, yeah. you want to cook this out until the oil separates. Because at first, when I mix this all in, it'll yeah. all sort of homogenize. But then after cooking for, it only take sort of three minutes, five minutes, the oil will separate and sort of go to the top. Now in a traditional jollof rice, we wouldn't have blended this. So the volume would be way higher. And that's when you then cook it down uh. and down and down. But what ends up happening is it's, see how it's yeah. splashing already? It's that all over your kitchen. So basically I'm gonna mix this and then now I'm actually gonna put a lid on it and just leave it for five minutes. I'm putting a lid, cause again, I don't like the mess. It's, yeah, yeah, I have a, an electric stove at home and if I get sauce everywhere, it's just, it's messy. So you'll notice there's still lots of flavor in here yes. and we don't wanna waste that. No. So that stock that we drain, that's gonna go into our stew. I'm gonna add a little bit in there and shake it up just so we're getting every single bit of flavor that we've worked to Perfect. develop. There we go. Easy. Easy peasy. And then that can go back into the stock. And there we have it. Ooh. There we go. See how you have these little pools of oil yes. above the sauce? That means that you've cooked it out really well. So I'm just gonna give that a stir. You can see it's really nice and thick. Like this is borderline a paste. And yeah. so this is where our stock comes in. And that's what's gonna loosen it up into what we in Nigeria would call a stew, but most people would probably call a sauce. I'm not gonna dump it all in at once. I'm okay. gonna sort of control the texture. So I'm gonna start with about half and see how that gets us. So it's gonna take a second to sort of come together, but just mix gently. Yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit more. So would you not just add all of it? There's only a little bit left in there. Should we just add all of yeah. it? Yeah, let's just add all of it. Like I've always found if I don't, then I, I then use the rest of the stock and I'll just use that to boil rice. And then suddenly ah. I have really tasty rice. So it's never gonna to go to waste. Okay. 
it's just a question of your preference in terms of texture. But we're gonna put the lid back on. Yeah. This is gonna go back on for five minutes. All right, so chicken's coming out. We've got some color so it doesn't just look like sad boiled chicken, which it never was to begin with, but you know, look at that. There you go. And then we are just gonna add this to our oh stew. Oh my God, I would happily eat this chicken <laughs> on its own kind of. Oh. There we go. I wish you guys could smell what we're smelling. I always cook with foil and or greaseproof, but only because I hate cleaning my oven trays. And there we go. We're gonna stir this into the sauce. Give it maybe, I don't know, five minutes to sort of get acquainted. Okay. And then you're pretty much done. <gasps> that smells and looks insane. There we go. So, here we go. It, the chicken has had a chance to sort of meld into the sauce. You can see it's almost falling apart. It's super, it super tender. Apart. And then we're ready to serve. You know, I love, love a chicken curry. And I know it's not a curry, it's a stew, mm -hmm. but it has chicken and it has been smelling amazing <laughs> the whole time. It's and she has food. refused to try it. Like she is true to her word. She has not tried this. Yet. Because I want to try it for you guys. You know, I love to, I will be honest. I can't wait. Mm. Mm. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. <gasps> Not too spicy? No, no, okay. the, it has heat. Mm -hmm. You guys will love it. It's not too hot, but it has got heat. It's got heat. Mm. And it also builds as you eat it. Wow. Right? So this would be a Nigerian chicken stew. Is it a standard Nigerian chicken stew? I feel like, yeah, like red, red sauce, whatever you want to call it. It's like the most basic stew. Wow. That and is... you can make it not with chicken, you can have it with beef, um, turkey. We use a lot of turkey. Oh, is it knuckle? I don't even know what it is, but turkey. You can do oxtail, add spinach. There's so much you could do. I've done it with um, oyster mushrooms before for oh. someone who is vegan. Wow, I am going to be making this a lot because that is incredible. Like you said, you can use just the sauce with everything actually. Mm -hmm. uh, even you could add like a spinach to this. Yeah, exactly. And a chin, tin of chickpeas or something yep. that you need more protein. This no, is, but you could, for me, this is perfect. Right, but yeah. if you wanted to, you could. You could, yeah. you could add lots of things. Wow. So um, we made. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> when did that happen? God knows. I think it, it it's saying to me that we need to wrap up. And <laughs> it's time to eat. <laughs> Say goodbye. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for you having me. You can find Zena's profile on Instagram. I'll leave the link in the description. Mm -hmm. Go follow her recipes, Thank check you. her workout, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you soon with another new recipe. Bye. Bye.